Well, hello and good morning. On to lecture 3.2. It's all about energy, producers, and consumers. The goal is to use a food web to identify and distinguish producers, consumers, and decomposers, explain the pathway of energy transfer through the trophic levels, and the reduction of available energy at successive trophic levels. So um, look at the far side. It's a really good one, too. I'm sure Mr. Ivoli would probably appreciate this one also. So I'll read it to you in case it's too small. I know you missed the Wainwrights, Bobby, but they were weak and stupid people, and that's why we have wolves and other large predators. Perfect, what, what, what we're going to be talking about today in our lecture. So our objectives are to, one, define primary producers and describe how consumers obtain energy and nutrients. So let's think about it. At the core of every organism's interaction with the environment is its need for energy to power life's processes. Where does energy and life, life living systems come from? How is it transferred from one organism to another? The transfer of food energy up the trophic levels from its source in plants and other autotrophic organisms through herbivores to carnivores and eventually to de decomposers is called a food chain. So our first objective is to define primary producers. Organisms need energy for growth, reproduction, and metabolic processes. No organism can create energy. Organisms can only use energy from other sources. For most life on Earth, sunlight is the ultimate energy source. For some organisms, however, chemical energy stored in inorganic chemical compounds serve as the ultimate energy source for life processes. Plants, algae, and certain bacteria can capture energy from sunlight or chemicals and convert it into forms that living cells can use. These organisms are called autotrophs. Autotrophs are also called primary producers. Primary producers are the trophic level that ultimately support all the others. They are photosynthetic and use light energy to synthesize sugars and other organic compounds, which can be, then be used for cellular respiration such as building materials for growth. So the best and most common primary producers harness the solar energy through the process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis captures its light's energy and uses it to power chemical reactions that convert carbon dioxide and water into oxygen and energy-rich carbohydrates. This process adds oxygen to the atmosphere and removes carbon dioxide. Wonderful things. Plants are the main photosynthetic producers on land. Algae fill that role in freshwater ecosystems and in the sunlit upper ocean. Photosynthetic bacteria, most commonly cyanobacteria, are important primar primary producers in tidal flats and salt marshes. The total amount of photosynthetic production being made sets the spending limit for the entire ecosystem's energy budget. We, us, everything is so dependent on these photosynthetic producers. Biologists have also discovered thriving ecosystems around volcanic vents in total darkness on the deep ocean floor. Deep sea ecosystems depend on primary producers that harness chemical energy from inorganic molecules such as hydrogen sulfide. The use of chemical energy to produce carbohydrates is called chemosynthesis. Chemosynthesis. Ugh. So chemosynthetic pro prokaryotes are the primary producers in ecosystems such as the deep sea hydrothermal vents. So let's review the objective one. Define primary producers. Primary producers are the first producers of energy-rich compounds that are later used by other organisms. Objective two. Describe how consumers obtain energy and nutrients. Organisms that must acquire energy from other organisms by ingesting in some way are known as heterotrophs. Heterotrophs are also called consumers, like us. They make up the trophic levels above the primary producers and depend directly or indirectly on the outputs of primary producers for the energy source. These consumers are classified by the ways in which they acquire energy and nutrients. Carnivores kill and eat other animals, including snakes, dogs, cats, and this giant river otter. They're all carnivores. Catching and killing prey can be difficult and requires energy. 
but meat is rich in nutrients and energy and is easy to digest. Scavengers, like the king vulture, are animals that consume the carcasses of other animals that have been killed by predators or have died of other causes. Then we have decomposers, such as bacteria and fungi. They feed by chemically breaking down organic matter. The decay caused by decomposers is part of the process that produces detritus, small pieces of dead, decaying plant and animal remains. Yum! Herbivores, such as the military McCall, shown here, obtain energy and nutrients by eating plant leaves, roots, seeds, or fruits. Common herbivores include cows, caterpillars, and deer. Omnivores are animals whose diets naturally include a variety of different foods that usually include both plants and animals. Humans, bears, and pigs are omnivores. Detritivores, like giant earthworms, feed on detritus particles, often chewing and grinding them into smaller pieces. Detritivores commonly digest decomposers that live on and in detritus particles. Prokaryotes and fungi are important detritivores. Decompo decomposition connects all the trophic levels, too. So categorizing consumers is important, but these simple categories often don't express the real complexity of nature, as you can see from this graph right here. For example, herbivores that eat different plant parts often differ greatly in the ways they obtain and digest food. In addition, organisms in nature often do not stay inside the categories we put them in. For example, some carnivores will scavenge if they get the chance. Many aquatic animals eat a mixture of algae, bits of animal carcasses, and detritus particles. It is important to expand upon consumer categories by discussing the way that energy and nutrients move through ecosystems, which we'll get to that. So our, our second objective was to describe how consumers obtain energy and nutrients. The answer is consumers acquire energy and nutrients from other organisms by ingesting in some way. To review our two objectives, ask yourself, can you, one, define primary producers, and two, describe how consumers obtain energy and nutrients. And finally, here's your cute picture for the day. Enjoy!